After 17 pulsating rounds of action in Allianz Premiership Women's Rugby, Unbelievable. we prepared to bring the curtain down on the regular season. Harlequins bid farewell to three club legends when they hosted Trailfinders, while Bristol Bears travelled to Sale, and Exeter Chiefs welcomed Leicester, with third place still to be decided. But we begin our roundup at the Cinch Stadium at Franklin's Gardens as Loughborough Lightning hosted high flying Saracens. Commentary comes from Nick Heath. Scarrett hauling out the big one. Oh, and that's nice to find the room on the outside for Westcombe Evans. And she's been in great try scoring form recently. And Westcombe Evans takes the outside around McKenna, looking for the corner. Oh! It's a brilliant last-ditch tackle from Farris. Scarrett now, that's a shorter ball for Chloe Rowley, who goes through the hole and uses the full work. Chloe Rowley stepping in a phone box, finishing the try, and Lightning have first blood. Donna Rose. You know, the three-time champions can be so dangerous in this area. Helen Nelson calling the recruitment back around that side as McKenna nearly manages to dance all the way through. Oh, and the reach out and the score. Sharifa Casolo. Well, that is ruthlessness from Saracens. Garrett frees the arms, gets it back away for Nelson, and now they might have the room for Westcombe Evans. Bo Westcombe Evans, ninth try of the season. Fante to Goody. Well stopped by Cabea. Emma Taylor, another Canadian. Then it's there for McKenna. She looked like she was pointing the other way as Helen Nelson Advantage comes in and makes clear. the tackle. But now there's another and advantage, it and it's Rose. Burrows low. Infante dummies and goes. Oh, that experience from Leanne Infante. Away for O'Donnell. Be ready to do the job and carries hard. Nelson. Scarrett a little deeper to wind up the options on the outside. Below Matai Tonga for the corner. Try time, Loughborough Lightning. Maul engaged early. Driving towards that line. It's with Fields. Penalty advantage is called. Infante's having a look for it, but they're getting close enough to the line that Bryony Fields can touch it down. Thanks, Ashley. Saracens on the attack here. Oh, and they've shifted it away. It's going to be the score for Tory Sellers. On to the field, replacing Infante, and on to the scoreboard. Casolo around the corner, got the shout to get the support away. Oh, it's super linking play from Saracens, continuing to come forwards. They've got the numbers as Taylor comes back against the grain once more. Five metres short now. Sellers with the dummy. Tory Sellers with a second try. And Saracens have just turned it on here. Muller scored a couple of tries a couple of weeks ago. Scout. Shipped it on for Rowley. Rowley for the corner. Tony Rowley will go in and do it herself. And she's got their fourth. It's finished. Loughborough Lightning 24. Saracens 33. Not as convincing as we would have wanted, but full credit to Loughborough. They, I think they played super well today and they threw the kitchen sink at us and they have a lot of talent in that group. So we kind of expected that and we probably didn't come out as strong as we needed to, especially to start the game. But I think characteristics of a good side is finding a way to win and we did that.
At Sandy Park, home side Exeter Chiefs wearing black knew they had to defeat Leicester Tigers convincingly to have a chance of clinching third place. First year university student Connie Clark made an impact on her PWR debut, heavily involved in the opening try. Hope Rogers crossing over. A few minutes later, Chiefs showed their power in a scrum and Brooke Bradley took the opportunity to race down the touchline. She, as well as Lizzie Hanlon and Harriet Miller-Mills, were featuring for Exeter for the last time. The hosts didn't have it all their own way, though. Leicester's Claire Gallagher with an interception, and she ran even further than Bradley. The Canadian international unstoppable. It had already been entertaining, but then something extra special. Exeter's teamwork, neat and precise. Then 19-year-old Clark received the ball. She looked cool as you like as she ran in her try. The Tigers responded a few minutes later, but Exeter were on song, and one university fresher was having the afternoon of her life. Yes, Connie Clark again. The hosts added another and went into the break, leading 31-15. They bossed the first period and the Chiefs started the second on top too. Maddy Fianati had just scored an opportunistic try, but her second one was beautifully worked. The Tigers were still fighting though, eager to end their first top flight season on a high. They stretched the visitors' defence with Talia Brody dotting down. They held off the hosts for 15 minutes, but the pressure was building. Marin Deutsch received the ball after some slick teamwork and shot through a gap to cross over from close range. Tigers got a bonus point as the game passed 80 minutes, but the Chiefs had the final word. And it was Deutsch again, still with energy to burn after almost 90 minutes of action in the scorching Exeter sun. 59-27 it ended, but whether they finished third or fourth was reliant on what happened at sale. Where Bristol Bears were the visitors, needing just one point to confirm third place and avoid meeting league leaders Gloucester Hartbury in the semi-finals. But Sale Sharks drew first blood, Lauren Delaney forcing her way over. Bears' Lark Atkin Davis had returned from a syndesmosis injury sustained during the Six Nations. Matt Sharp already. She made it 5-all. Both teams exchanged tries again before Sale took the lead for the third time in the match in front of their roaring home support. Fast hands from the Sharks, and it was finished off in style by Holly Thorpe. But it was visiting Bristol who went into half-time in front Renita Bonner weaved through the challenges, offloading superbly to Holly Aitchison, who set up Alicia Joyce Butchers. This the only try of the six scored in the first half to be converted, so the Bears had a 15-17 lead at the break. Sharks, who'd started the round bottom of the table, came out again meaning business. They were all strength and determination, and despite their visitors' best efforts, Georgie Paris Redding got over the line and the hosts had the advantage, again, 22-17. Only for Bristol to retaliate five minutes later. Some nice interplay and Ella Lovibon sprinted across the line. That earned them a bonus point, which guaranteed a third place finish. But Sale were the ones celebrating more jubilantly at the end. Laura Perrin's cross-field kick found the weight in thought and she dived over. Back-to-back -back wins for Sharks, who finished the season in style. This 27-24 victory over high-flying Bristol saw them climb from the bottom of the table at Leicester's expense. Finally, to the Twickenham Stoop, where sixth place was at stake hosts Harlequins four points ahead of London rivals Trailfinders. But the visitors made a blistering start with two tries inside five minutes, Abby Dow crossing over first. And they made it three tries inside the opening quarter of an hour, Karis Cox this time with the lung-bursting run. The conversion made it 3.19 to Trailfinders, who were running riot in their neighbour's own backyard. 
Harlequins finally weathered the storm and responded. From a mall, Captain Jade Conkle Roberts powered over to reduce the deficit. Trailfinders, though, were on a mission, seeking the fifth win of their debut PWR campaign. And Dow, back after missing their last outing, shone for the visitors again, racing down the left wing. 8.26 after the conversion. For their part, the hosts were desperate not to end the season with a third successive defeat. And Laggy Tweema's solo effort demonstrated their desire. The England centre reviving their hopes, even if trailfinders struck again before the interval. At the start of the second half, Harlequin's stalwart Rachel Burford came off to a standing ovation from the home crowd. She, Shauna Brown and Emily Scott were playing their final games for the club, while Elisa Rifano was making her last appearance for trailfinders, so this was a try to remember. Once Rosie Inman got started, there was no looking back. She raced upfield with Rifano alongside her, who crossed the line. Harlequins added to their tally before Dow got her third of the game. This one probably the toughest of the three, but she was on fire. And with the extras, this gave Trailfinders a 25-point lead. The game had featured some impressive counter-attacking plays, but even in that company, this stood out. England under-20s international Katie Schilliker shimmied and sprinted. The one-time ballet dancer was uncatchable and Quinns had their bonus point. But Trailfinders took the victory and what's more, with their final try, they totaled 50 points for the first time in Allianz Premiership Women's Rugby. Vicky Laffin making the dash, only to be tackled, but still able to find Abby Burton, who crossed over. It ended Harlequins 27, Trailfinders 54. So big final day victories for Exeter and Trailfinders, while Saracen's class prevailed in the end in a tough game against Loughborough. But it was Sale who produced the result of round 18 with their stunning win against Bristol. Even so, the Bears did hold on to third place, thanks to their losing bonus point, with West Country rivals Exeter finishing fourth. Trailfinders leapfrogged Harlequins into sixth, while Leicester ended the season bottom of the pile. So we know our semi-finals. The 9th of June is the date when Saris host the Bears before defending champions Gloucester Hartbury welcome Exeter. Both matches are live on TNT Sports 1 with coverage beginning at 1.30pm. Join us next time when we review those mouth-watering ties.